you have to communicate where one person is listening. A lot of times, right? The other person is, I can't, go ahead, keep talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I got something to say. Do you know what that means? You're not listening. You got your nine loaded and you like, as soon as he or she finished, I'm going to just start shooting. Got you cannot hand, do that. Got your hand on the whole store already, huh? Listen, Jose <laughs> used to say something, and I used to be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and I got an extended clip. I said, as soon as he finished, I'm going to be like, Brr. Survive Marriage, Surviving Marriage 101. Today we're going to be talking about communication and finances. Mm. It's going to get deep up in here, okay? It's going to get real deep up in here. Get your scuba gear because we're going really deep. If you are a returning viewer, subscriber, thank you MJT fam for just always supporting us. We want to make sure that we bring you the latest and greatest. So you got to always make sure you hit that post notification bell. And you know what? Share this content. Share this channel. Hit like. All that good stuff that goes with it. So we thank you for your support. We're continuing to climb each and every day because of you. So for, for those of you that are loyal to us, Thank you. We want to be loyal to you and just bring you, like I said, the goodness, right? And if you're new stopping by this channel, thank you. We thank you for your time. We want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please. We want you to be a part of the MJT fam. So, Jose and I are going to get into this today. And you can comment throughout. You can like throughout. And, you know, as you're watching, and put your comments in there because your comments are important to us. I answer every single comment uh, that is posted under a video. So we're excited to talk about this. Um, it wasn't always glitz and glam. If you've watched uh, Surviving Marriage 101, if you have not, we want you to go ahead and take a look at this video right here and make sure you watch it um, so you can be on track with us because we think that it's going to be a part three or four it might be we said part three but it might be part four too Absolutely. so you know what this is what we want you to know even though the thumbnail shows surviving marriage we want you guys to understand that these are some things that you need to know even if you're in a relationship if you are a fiance uh you know or you're courting someone or whatever the case is all of this stuff is important to know because i'm not saying that you're not going to have ups and downs jose and i we've had plenty of ups and downs, right? Absolutely. So we're not saying that you won't have any ups and downs, but at least if you're prepared. And you have the tools to work through it, you know, yeah. because I think that's the key. They don't have the tools to work through the ups and downs. I think yeah. that is very important. Understanding how to handle the ups and downs. Yeah. Opposed to, you know, what's the norm, which is I'll go my way, she'll go her way. And then hopefully we'll get back together, you know, when cooler has prevailed. Now, I don't think that's a good remedy for relationships i believe mm. that it should always be addressed that way it's never there's never nothing lingering mm. you know, i think that's important to always hit it head on get it over with that way you guys can basically be who you guys are loving each other and caring for each other because that's what you guys were before the argument or before the disagreement it doesn't uh, always have to be an argument okay sure <laughs> he already started with the golden nuggets for you guys <laughs> He said, hit it head on, right? And so we had to learn that. I want to say, and us being very transparent, the thing that would make Jose and I like this would be not communicating yeah, um, and, and just having, 
I wouldn't say poor communication because we communicate. But here's the thing. You have to communicate where one person is listening. A lot of times, right? The other person is... I can't... Go ahead, keep talking. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Because I got something to say. Do you know what that means? You're not listening. You got your nine loaded and you like, as soon as he or she finished... I'm going to just start shooting. Got you cannot hand. do that. Got your hand on the whole store already, huh? Listen, Jose <laughs> used to say something, and I used to be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and I got an extended clip. I said, as soon as he finished, I'm going to be like, <laughs> but I realized <laughs> that that was not the, you know, that wasn't an effective way of communicating. Uh -huh. And he's laughing because he knows I'm, that he's very hard-headed. I am infamous for not forget having it on the holster. I got the one, you know, the, the, the big one that you put on the shoulder, like, go ahead, I'm ready. But you know, right say, I'm gonna take it out real quick. And and that that's just, it was a good form of communication because yeah. um, it, it hindered our relationship. Yeah. Because instead of hearing her complaint or hearing what she had to say, I already had an answer before she even gave me her problem. Yeah. And how could I have an answer when I've, I haven't even heard the question. Or the concern. Or the concern. Yeah. You can't have an answer for something yeah. if you haven't fully heard what the concern, question, or problem is. Yeah. There's no way to have the answer. Right. You know, if I had the answers, then I, I need to hurry up and go to the lottery and get those tickets. Because <laughs> <laughs> I must true. be good. I mean, if I'm that good, I, right. mean, I need to get those numbers out, right? I shared in another video that, you know, we have to be able yeah. uh, to just be good listeners. And Absolutely. I think in communication, Absolutely. you have to really listen. You have yeah. to put your guard down. So if we're going to survive marriage or survive mm -hmm. those relationships you have to put your guard down and yeah. you have to be in a position to listen. Listen, you may not agree, but there's the respect. Respect each other enough to at least listen to what your partner is saying. And then again, you can use the let's kind of agree to disagree or you can abort the conversation, meaning maybe we'll come back to this conversation later. But if you guys don't work on your communication, it's going to be something that's going to hinder the growth in your marriage. Then it's going to breed, you know, bitterness. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to start stepping out and looking for, for other someone, things, right? right? For, for someone, someone or who something. Your attention or who actually... Listen listens to you. absolutely and, and you think they're listening but they're listening with a motive which is you know to steal you from your significant other mm. well here l listen it's funny you bring that up because it's like well when i talk to bob at work and if you're a bob watching <laughs> i'm not talking about you okay when i talk to bob at work he listens you want to fight in your house Bring up another man's name in the house. Well, bring up so, another woman in the house. Yeah. You can say, you know what? When Susie is at the cubicle, <laughs> she just pays attention to what I say. Every little intricate detail. And she follows through with what I say. Unlike you, babe. You want to fight? When you say that, unlike you, trust me, that fight is coming. The fight started when he said, Susie. Susie. <laughs> Nothing else after Susie. Susie, and we're just talking to y'all. My ear twitching and, like and Susie, Susie. If you're a Susie, we're not, we're not talking, talking about, about you, you right? right? We ain't talking about you. We ain't talking about Bob. Absolutely. We're just saying that you guys really have to, and a lot of it could be because your schedules are so busy, mm -hmm. so you're not communicating. You got one spouse that works during the day, you got another spouse that works through the night, so you, just like we said in part one, you have to schedule those times for dating, yeah. but you also have to schedule those times to communicate. Yeah. How was your day? And so there, therefore, the work wife and the work husband don't have no room. You're not opening up a window for the devil to creep in because that when people start to desire other things outside of their, their marriage and you have to remain in the covenant that was created for you when you said I do. Right. I okay? Agree, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. And another thing I want to add to that you know because when you said night and day schedules. Yeah. Um, another thing that's important in passing each other you know say give your wife a compliment or give your husband a compliment. Yeah. Wow you look amazing. Even though they're going to work it doesn't matter. You know that's so important because guess yeah. what? Susie's paying attention and Bob is paying attention. 
So they're gonna say, Susie's gonna say, man, you smell good. And 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 Bob is gonna say, wow, you smell and look good. Mm. And what That's to? another thing. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you why you need to communicate. Because when he just said that smell good, oh, that gets me all the time. Well, it used to get me, you know. We're like, why you got all that cologne for? And women are infamous for saying, you smell good. Oh, I love that cologne. And then here's their ego and they're puffing up or whatever the case is. All we're trying to say is, don't hide the cologne. Because if you're secure in your marriage, he could wear the whole damn on bottle if that's what he wants to do. He's getting all the attention that he needs to get at home because he is communicating or she is communicating. So if you want to strengthen your marriage and if you want to survive, you have to make sure that you allot time to communicate. And listen, if your schedules are so hectic, when you go on your lunch break, Send a text, send a I love you, send a quick little video. You have to, again, we talked about this in part one, the same things you did to get the, your uh, spouse, your spouse or significant or other absolutely. are the same things that you have continue. to continue to do absolutely. when you're together. It, you don't stop because like I said, you're like, oh, bad and tag, I don't have to do anything. That is not, that's not, that's not good. No, it's not. You got to communicate. Say good morning. Say good evening. Say good night. Text. Or, or I love text, you. I love you. And you know, yeah. and with the iPhones, you know, they have these little effects. So sometimes I'll throw a heart out there and it's a whole bunch of hearts swiggling all around. Or if I want to make it real intricate and like, you know, let her know that I'm putting it down on her, I'll put the spotlight and it'll say, I love you on the spotlight, which lets her know she's the spotlight. She's the apple of my eye. And that lets her know that she's the most important person. Although I'm out of the house, she's still the person I'm thinking about the most. <laughs> Again, he always trying to set up for the get up. You get what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so again, we're going to switch topics. We did talk about communication. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the time. So key things, communicate. Talk things out. Don't fight things out. Right. We also said in part one that you guys want to pray together. Right. And sometimes, like Jose said, when cooler heads prevail, then you can come together. But before you communicate, if you're in that type of you know marriage or mm -hmm. um, relationship where it's hard for you guys to communicate, we want you to kind of pray, maybe separate, Lord. Please guide me as we come into this, uh, you know, come into this conversation, Lord God. May you be my mouthpiece. And, and then the other person prays the same thing. And then you come together and then you ask the Lord to do, to work in the middle of what it is that you're going. Because if he's not at the center of your marriage, then you're going to be, you're going to continue to fight. I think you should communicate about everything. You said something I want to add. And don't pray, Lord, fix her. Or Lord, <laughs> fix him. Yeah, you fix yourself. Yeah, because if you can fix yourself, yeah, then you guys can meet together at the same place where the yeah. Lord is at. You get yeah. that? Because you need your fixing. She doesn't need to be fixed. You need to understand you better. Oh, that's because what that's about. what's going on. It's, it's a, a, a full and, and, and yeah, I know guys are gonna be like, ah, what are you talking about? Trust me, you have to fix you because sometimes our ego gets in the way. Yeah. And the same thing for women. Sometimes their ego gets in the way. And because the ego gets in the way, neither person can communicate properly. Mm -hmm. And then it's always the same scenario. Oh, that person, how she just thinks she's uh, uh, this, that, and the third. Guess what? You fix you and let the Lord do the rest. Y'all, he's spitting mad. Wisdom on y'all today. And this is how we, I mean, it wasn't always like this. It was like, I don't have nothing to say to you. We're going to be very transparent. Absolutely. We're a Christian married couple. And there were times where it's like, I'm not talking to you. And I ain't talking to you tomorrow. And you can pistol me in for Friday not talking to you either. <laughs> but that is not the way communication goes. You have to come together. And this is why we're in love. And this is why we're just trying to share this with the world that if you just work on it, if it's worth anything worth having, it's worth fighting for. It, it, it does. It's not just a job. It's not just your business. It's your relationships, your friendships. But we want you to survive your marriage. And this is why we're dropping that one-on-one. -on -one. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and always Hit that post notification bell so you know when I'm dropping the latest, latest and greatest. greatest. Make right. sure you drop your comments down there because we definitely want to hear what you have to say in regards to communication. Hey, real quick on the communication. And lastly, this is a lastly thing. 
Never let the sun go down on your wrath, guys. Please, I know. never. It took me a while. Never, never let this. And what that means, guys, is like, don't go to bed upset. You know, the Bible tells us, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Can I just be very honest with y'all? I used to be like, oh, it's 5.30. I got plenty of time. <laughs> sun ain't down yet. <laughs> sun ain't down. I had to learn. You get what I'm saying? And it was so funny because I was talking to Nakia the other day because, you know, my husband got on my nerve the other day and I said, you know what? I can't let the sun go down on my raft. And then she looked at me and said, the sun is down. And I said, well, it ain't 11.59 yet, so I'm not going into the next day. You get what I'm saying? We haven't, I mean, we haven't perfected it, but I'm telling you, we are nowhere near where we were. Near where we were. Our stuff resolves instantly. Why? Because we don't want to grieve the Lord by being, how can he bless a marriage that's always like, you know. And we're two strong people is the yeah, thing. So yeah. it, that could be hard with two strong people, Yeah, you know, just trying to communicate and you adamant about what you see and I'm adamant about what right. I see and it's like ah ah and before you know it that's where we'll have that tension but I can tell you my husband as being the head of household <laughs> he tends to apologize I do first I do. I do. so I do. try to out apologize each other or be the first to apologize be guys. the first to apologize first yeah to apologize. So let's, you know, working on communication is important. Listen, I don't care if you leave a, you know what, if you're that type of significant other or wife uh, that, or that fiance that packs your, you know, packs the lunch for your spouse, leave a love note in there. You know, that's communication. That's right. When they open up their lunch and see those love letters. I did that for years to oh Jose. Goodness. I used to love that. I used, used to, to love, love. Open up and seeing I love you and I this. Yeah. And I, also, you know what she used to do? She used to also write, um... Hey, babe, um, when you get home, we need to uh, start doing the finances. So we need to check up. We're going to sit down together. And that's part of communication as well. We started talking about finances. Yeah, I so, didn't break him in. So she would say, when you get off at five, make sure you come in and, and be prepared to do the bills with me. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you want to know why as we switch the topic? Because I'm a saver. She is. My husband is a free spirit. He has yet to be delivered from it. I don't know if I'm ever going to be delivered from being a free spirit. You know, because I, I just want to give you the best that I, that life can give you before life is over for you. And I think, you know, losing my father at a young age, uh, losing my father at a young age hurt me tremendously. Mm -hmm. And in that pain... Uh, I look at my wife and I always want to give her the best. I always want to make sure that she has the best while she's alive and she can experience it. Yeah. So I think that kind of drives and fuels my free spiritness if, 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 in a sense. Well, it does. It drives it drives the debit card <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then he doesn't look at the budget. So while he's adorning me with great gifts, um, I'm like, what, which account did that? come from okay we're going to talk about that right so we want to talk about finances because we have found that finances mm. could be another thing that make you uh clash in a relationship because someone may not be pulling their weight that could be one or you both are equally pulling your weight but someone is a spender and that's what it is i'm the nerd in the relationship <laughs> And he's the free spirit. The, the nerd does the checks and balances, okay? Right, right. And if you haven't done like the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University, I would say there's some of the concepts that I have used in our in our life since I took the course, since I taught the course. Yeah. Course. Course. The course. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you know what a course is, right? So, uh, and so there's some things that I agree with. There's some things that... I absolutely, uh, uh, no, that we absolutely apply. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. it was really hard for Jose to understand what an envelope system was, okay? Oh, There's an envelope here, and the envelope has money in it. And so you just label the envelope. You got to get into communication with, we say, okay, this envelope is for groceries. When the cash leaves this envelope, that's it. Or this this envelope is for blow money. You can blow it on whatever you want to blow. You've allocated blow money. You just blow it on whatever you want. This is for family time, going out, clothing, 
gifts because you know if you if you like me there's always an invitation you always got somewhere to go you got a gala you, you took vip tickets are a hundred dollars so you want to go to your yeah. gift envelope to make sure that you're able to pay for these tickets and not affect the original budget right. but the point is if you don't sit down and communicate about your finances right. it's always going to be a problem here's yeah. another oh, go ahead and i think i think with that also you have to know what you plan on allocating what you plan on allocating to that those those certain things you have to and i think that's where we grew at a bunch uh, you know where we sat down and said, okay, we're going to do grocery, and the grocery is going to be about somewhere in the range of 150 to 200 right? Because our kids, the older kids are gone, the boys are gone, and, you know, Jenna doesn't eat as much as they do. I'm going to tell you, we use that Walmart. I'm going to put y'all on to something if you don't. That Walmart app. Oh, my goodness. Order your groceries. <laughs> and all you got to do is go pick them up. I love it. That's how I grocery shop. Now, I don't really like how they substituted my Edamon, uh, Edamon's pound cake for uh, that little great they value. little great value, little crumble cake. Oh. But outside of that, the whole point is, is that if you put if you crumble put your cake. app, if you put your app, your, your groceries in the app, the total is at the bottom. That way you stick to your budget. See, he hands me the phone and it's nearly $300. That's like $100 per person. It's just me, him, and Jada in here. <laughs> no, sir. We don't need that. And we don't need that. She starts deleting. I start deleting stuff. stuff that I got up Because that's the nerd in me, right? She's like, we don't need this. We don't need this. We don't yeah. Need this. Uh, this guy got ice cream, snow cones, <laughs> and all kinds of Klondike bars. We ain't got no meat. We ain't got no shrimp for me. Y'all know I'm a pescatarian, so we got to fix this. I backed that thing down the other day by $62, and ain't nobody in here starving. See how fluffy we are? Ain't nobody starving. So if you stick to the budget. Fluffy? Yeah, I am fluffy. I just came from the doctor. That's, that's I'm not fluffy. I disagree with me, man. You said we fluffy. Oh. I'm not fluffy. We, that's going to be another thing we're going to talk about because he just sit for me on the camera. Okay, so so again, we're keeping up with your budget. If you do it like that and you already order the app, then you guys don't have to get into a miscommunication in Walmart when he or she start throwing extra things into the cart. And you're like, listen, the budget was set for $200. It eliminates the variable of you going into the uh, grocery store and having big eyes. Uh -huh. Because now you don't have to worry about having big eyes as you're going through the aisle. Oh, that man! I remember how that taste. I, I would want that for a snack. I can have that uh, as a as a snack for, for work. Y'all, we talking about food, but I'm telling you, it go deeper with this dude. I remember, <laughs> and, and we're and, and we're gonna get back on the topic because we got a few more minutes and, and we gotta end this video. Mm -hmm. I remember I'm sitting in the backyard minding my own business and he's gone see this is what happens with my husband he disappears and then when he disappears he reappears with gifts okay or bags or, bags or whatever the case is right so i'm sitting in the backyard minding my own business again we're being very transparent hopefully this will help you guys right and a few weeks prior he was like i feel like when we're in the backyard we need a speaker. I'm like, babe, we don't need no speaker. <laughs> yeah, he laughing. So he comes in. Uh, Can you grab I'll it? be right back, guys. I'll be right back. Because I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious about this. So, guys, please go ahead and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. Uh, this conversation that we're having on Surviving uh, Marriage 101, Part 2. We're talking about finances and communications. So I'm so excited to have the MJT fam. Comment, let us know what you're thinking, okay? And always hit that post notification bell so you know when I'm dropping the latest and greatest. Back to what I was saying. So he said that we needed a speaker. And I was like... Well, sir, and this, there was no music going on. There was, no there was music. music. There was music. You barely hear it. He had these other little speakers that was fine. So he comes in with these. Man. Man. I bought two of no. them, too. He comes in. No, but this is not what he did. He comes out. He's like, babe, look. Look what I got. And I'm like, you went and bought a speaker? And he was like, yeah. yeah. Listen, let me plug it in. 
boom, 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 boom. He said, see, that's how it's supposed to be when we in the backyard. And I'm fuming, yeah. I'm fuming. She I'm like, fire. he did not talk to me about this purchase. He comes back with another one. He goes, steps out, come back, he's like, I bought you one. This don't make it better. That don't make it better. What am I going to do with a speaker? He's really? like, I figured I'd buy you one too. No, Jose, you really bought yourself two speakers no, no, and no. you just no, no. no I really no, bought you I bought no. you one. I really bought you one and I bought myself one and and this was my rationale, right? And, and guys do this. I figure if I buy me one, I have to buy her one. That way it's acceptable. So that's why I bought two. What do I what do I want with a speaker? Well, you know, we found out what you used when you was in Whatever. Your in my office, office, in my office, okay, whatever. But okay, I used it because I was in my office. I'd be able to play my music in between clients and stuff like that. But I would I was fine dealing with clients with no music in my office. So, so my he's question just trying is, to so justify. Wait, wait, wait. So my question is, did you enjoy my little gift to you? I did. After, <laughs> I did. After yeah, I was mad. After she was mad, she enjoyed the gift. But the key is, guys, yeah. before you buy the speakers, make sure you communicate with your wife. Let her know what you're going to do. Hey, look, I'm going out to get some speakers because we don't have no speaker for the backyard. And plus, in your office, I noticed that, you know, I want you to usher in the Holy Spirit and you can play some Christian music. And then at that point, she could have made a sound decision to tell me whether, hey, all right, you're only going to get one this time and then we'll budget for the next one the next time. Well, at, let them know. Let's be honest. How are you doing now? I think I'm doing much better. I'm not, I'm not out there splurging. Babe. What am I doing? What did I buy? Babe. What did I buy that you think that I bought without? Tell me. Okay, maybe Tell me. over the last sixty days you've done last better. Last ninety days. No. Okay, let's go. And I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna abort this conversation. <laughs> so look, you guys got it right. In I'm gonna live abort. action. In live action, I'm gonna abort it. aborting, and that's it. It's done. We're not gonna talk about it. See, I'm aborting She's the aborted. conversation. Where's the green card? I think I got a green card on me. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flag your green card. If you saw a part, um, uh, surviving marriage 101, our green card is is is, I told you guys is what we wave. I told you guys I was gonna have it ready this time. We put our green card out. It's upside down, baby. We put our green card out. Ah, there we go. You know I can't. I don't have my glasses. I, know, so I can't I even you. hear. I got you. I can't even hear. Hopefully, I'm. Uh, hear. Yeah, I can't even great. see. But you sound great. And I and I can't even hear really. But that's but, the green card. But this is our green card, and we flag this green card. Let them get a good close up of it. So they Let's can see, see what the words it say. On yeah, intentional love. We told you guys, right? Oh. So we hold that up, and it's over. It's, over. it's that or abort. Abort. And we're not talking about it anymore. Right. So. I think we got off topic a little bit because we just enjoy being together and being on camera. But definitely, I want you guys to start talking about your finances because that has been um, a trial for Jose and I. Uh, if you read uh, my book, um, Enduring Through the Storms of Life, I talk about in detail uh, the financial hardship that Jose and I went through. And it was very, very hard. I mean, just, you know, living paycheck to paycheck and just not knowing how we were going to get gas and things like that. Those things can be very burdensome on the uh, on the marriage because, you know, you start blaming each other and then you realize that we're in this together, but you don't see that. Desperation just brings out so many raw emotions and, you know, uh, then you can't communicate and then people are stepping out and just going outside of their marriage trying to fill a void, but the void is really getting centered with the Lord and then help, you know, bringing your, your problems and, to him. And then, and then saying crazy stuff to your spouse. Oh, you don't have a real job or like, what, what? yeah, <laughs> don't do that. Because listen, some people male or female won't right. even get up and go work. Right. So if your spouse works any job, right. let's That's just be job. grateful for that. If you get spouse, what I'm saying? If your spouse works at McDonald's, don't degrade the spouse yeah. that they work at McDonald's. It's a job, guys. Yeah. Don't do that. You know, don't say, oh, you don't have a real job because your job makes, you know, thousands of dollars and his job or her job only makes $500 every two weeks. It's still income coming in together, guys. Right. It's still income coming in together. Speaking of together, we're going to come off of this finance thing, mm -hmm. okay? Because Jose and I can really get my book. Enduring Through the Storms of Life. Yes, it's on Amazon or it's on my website. Please I'll put my website down here for you. 
and read that chapter. I mean, read the whole book, but read the chapter on what we went through uh, through our financial hardship. And you would think that could break a marriage, but we're still here after 20 plus years. So we're just giving you, I love you too. <laughs> He's always trying. Um, that will get, now you done made me lose my thought. See, why you do that? So it, it that brought it back, no? No, it didn't. It made it worse. It anyway, it read that. Worse? Yeah, it did. You want them to read your book because, you know, you want them to read about the, the troubles that we went through and our financial hardship, you know, how we struggled through it, how we got over it, and yeah. how we built a relationship this strong, guys. That's what she's trying to touch you guys with. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Don't be messing me up because I got I got the MJT fam. Hey. So, you know, th this is important. So please take some of these things that we have shared with you uh, in surviving your marriage and surviving your relationship. You just got to have communication. I mean, that is really key. We're going to be coming back to you with part uh, three because we got some more stuff to talk about. OK, we're going to be talking about intimacy. That's his favorite topic. Y'all, he wanted to talk about that today. He was like, can we do intimacy today? I'm like, let's <laughs> let's pray and talk about it. He can't wait to talk about it. I think he'd ask me. But anyway, wait. so we're going to talk nasty. about that. Hun, let's talk off camera. Okay, we'll talk off camera. So, um, y'all, he keep messing me up. I can't stand it. So anyway, I hope that you guys understand that communication is the foundation of a strong marriage, okay? Absolutely. And so, and, and respect and all the other things. If you have not seen that other uh, video that we did, go back and look at 101, part one, and then you'll see how we're picking up here in part two. We want you guys, uh, we want your relationships to thrive. So if you work on your communication and start talking about your finances, I know Jose, like he said, he get a headache when it's time to talk about money, but it's just what is necessary so that you can diffuse any upcoming um, miscommunications or whatever the case is. That's what I wanted to say. Here's the last thing. Jose and I don't have his account and my account. In our part three, we're also going to be talking about trust because if you have a spouse that is a, a spender, it is important for you guys to maybe go through some marriage counseling or some type of financial peace university. You can check, you can call on me, uh, whatever it is that you want to do to kind of get that guidance in your finances and, and, and let someone coach you or let me coach you through that because I'm telling you, having a joint account it's, it's, it's trust. Absolutely. It is trust. You get what I'm saying? You have nothing to hide. Um, so Jose and I, are, now we understand and we're not, we're not saying it. I know I have many of clients that have come in and they're like, I have my own and she has their own. And then we have an account that we pay bills through. Mm -hmm. Jose and I just believe that it should be a joint. Your marriage is joint. Your marriage isn't separate. And so please consider that, you know, if the finances is that strenuous that there's one partner that's spending or taking the money or whatever the case is, then get some counseling on that. And then you guys start to build that trust. And then eventually you guys can combine your income. Okay. So I definitely wanted to touch on that. All right, guys. Well, that's it for surviving your marriage one-on-one part two. I'm so glad that you hung in here with us. Make sure you subscribe to this page, share, and tell your friends to come and visit the Let's Build, uh, the, the Let's Build Together channel and join the MJT fam. Okay, guys, you know what I'm going to say. Uh-huh. As always, X-O-Boom.